I'm thinking about how we change the story that we tell around those differences. Because at the moment, who, the, so there'll be listeners who sit in lots of gro- those groups who I'm sure might be slightly triggered even by your very careful and diplomatic way of talking about them, right? Because whenever we hear someone talking who is just obviously not of the same disposition for us, obviously does not have the same starting points or the same sacred values, I think we have a tendency to assume disdain or to assume... Um, that that difference equals distance or difference equals threat, actually. And that wherever we sit on some of those paths, the the story is so easy to tell, you know, and you you, you alluded to one of the ones that that, that liberals tell so kind of annoyingly and unhelpfully in the political space, which is like, you know, backwards or people who are very rooted, I, you know, having talked to people from all kinds of tribes, I think people that, that the sort of, you know, the sneering about the liberal intelligentsia or the sneering about, you know, people that, that we, we just sneer at each other, don't we? We have the, t- the tendency to go from, oh, that's different. You have a different set of values for me. You have a different set of starting points too. I respect you less, <laughs> frankly. Um, it's such an easy move to make. And I think it's this relationship between you know, we're more secure with people like ourselves. As soon as we're not with people like ourselves, we're slightly on our guard, I think, that that fight or flight goes up a little bit. And what fight or flight does is it shuts down empathy, it shuts down the ability to be curious, makes people much more likely to look like an enemy, much more likely to believe nonsense about them. And so I'm trying to work on like actively affirming difference, like trying to counter that story by saying, great, you're not like me. What can I learn from you? How can how can my strengths and your strengths come together into something really great? I, if I'm an analytical person, I actually really need the concrete person. If I'm a concrete person, I really need the analytical person. And I think that's maybe what we've lost, the sense, or maybe we never had it, the sense that the differences are not a threat, they're a gift, and we need each other. But all of this othering, all of this triggered, anxious, self-protective tribal instincts in us are getting constantly reinforced. That's not a very coherent question, forgive me, but maybe in your own life, are there postures, practices, rituals that help you now? Even Because even in your own team, I'm sure you've got, you know, there'll be lots of people quite like you, but there'll, there'll be, you know, there'll be generational differences, there'll be disagreements on some things. What helps us remember that we actually need the difference. It's not necessarily a problem. problem. Yeah. Well, I, I love, there's a, um, a guy, John Powell, who's um, on uh, Morgan Commons board. He's the founder of the um, Othering and Belonging Institute in um, in California. And John has this wonderful way of saying it, of how we think. He says, you know, um, the way that we often see the world is, you know, I'm complex, but you're simple. Hmm. Um that is, you know, on my side, I can excuse the behavior. You've got to understand where, like my tribe, you know, they do, oh, well, they said that, but they didn't really mean it, whatever. But as for your side, well, you know, the worst version of your side is clearly representative of all of them. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, the media environment we're in, social media, that kind of elevates the most conflict-oriented sort of folks, the people with the most jagged points of view, you hear the most extreme. So... You know, uh, a um, a warrior for a particular point of view. Let's take you know Gaza as a good example right now. The most extreme position on Gaza will become representative of one side, and likewise, you know, on on the other. We did research around the the attitudes of the people of the public on the the conflict Gaza. This is actually something we did in the UK and and in France, and we found that. Four out of five of people who are deeply concerned about the impact of the attacks um, on uh, the Hamas attacks on Israeli citizens are also deeply concerned about the impact on people, Palestinians in Gaza. And likewise, four out of five people who are deeply concerned about the humanitarian suffering, the awful tragedy of what's happening in Gaza are also concerned about the you know horrific killings of Hamas um, in Israel. And what that tells me is that you've got this debate around us that is so polarizing and so so divisive and has made people really, you know, in those communities especially, really turn on the other side and buy into very aggressive rhetoric. But it's 
it's a sort of coming off a a, a, a very uh, inaccurate picture of reality that imagines that most people are sort of siding with one uh, group and, and against the other. Mostly, mostly people are not. They're just genuinely concerned about humanitarian suffering and want to stop that. 